What's up guys and gals? Today we have a Shimano Saragossa 6000 SW that we're going to break down, service, and reassemble uh, with some tips and tricks along the way. First we're going to start with the spool. I'm going to pull this off by removing this drag knob on top by going counterclockwise. So just pull it up. Pop that off. We'll start with the top drags. Uh, you can see it's kind of dirty in there. But we'll start with the top drags and to get those out we're going to remove this little clip that's inside there. Look for the open section, which is right here. Insert a little small screwdriver, push in and up to get it out. Then they just come out. Ooh, that is nastiness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, to clean these things off, I'm just going to use a paper towel. Depending how bad these uh, drags are, I might replace them or um, or just clean them off and if I were to do that I would use something along the lines of brake cleaner fluid to get that all that um, junk and gunk off of there and then I regrease it now we'll go ahead and flip this over so we can access this bottom portion here I'm going to remove these three screws to pull that cover off this is a casing that's inside there you'll notice inside there there's some ridges that's what the clicker is running on now let's go ahead and pull this out. Close, but no cigar. Yeah, one of them fell out already. All right, so one of the click pins, okay, not both of them fell out. There they are right there. There's two little holes on the side that received them. There's two springs in there that they go into. Now you'll notice that you can do it on either side. Uh, if you're going to put them on one side or the other, just make sure you put both of them on the same side versus one over here and one over here. And this little, uh, these screws here, I'm going to leave this together. I'm not going to separate this piece. Now all you have left on there here is just a drag washer that looks like that. And that will sit on top of that like that. All right. So like I said, I'll use a paper towel. Uh, I'll also be using a bunch of Q-tips get this all cleaned up I'll come right back to you guys in a sec okay first let's start with greasing these drag washers up I want to use something called Cal's universal reel and drag grease you just put a light coat on there these are the top two drags then we have that one bottom one to stick in there And when we're done with these, we're going to do the bottom drag first. So you see that goes back in. And then we'll go to the top. All right, so the first thing we're going to put in is that drag washer. Just go sitting in on the bottom. If you look inside there, there's a little ridge right there. It has to sit flush around that ridge. Hope you saw that. Like that. Then we're going to take a little bit of this drag grease here. And I'm going to use a Q-tip and just dab it over these holes. If I can get some inside is what I'm trying to do. And I like to kind of keep the grease the same in the areas that, uh, of the areas of the drag. And for the rest of the really use a different kind of grease. Even though with this one, you could use it for the entire thing. Now I'm going to take the both springs, stick them in, drop them all the way in. The reason I put the get the uh, the drag grease inside there is because I wanted to hold on to those. I'm gonna do the same thing for the tips. Not too much because we don't want to deaden the sound too much, but I want to have these pins when I put them in stay in place. And now we can do this, and they don't fall out. I think. <laughs> They shouldn't. All right, so now we're going to take this and drop it in face down. It sits over that ridge, kind of like that. And now we're going to have to kind of manufacture the positioning of this. But it's not as bad as it sounds. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down over it. And as I gently push down, I'm going to rotate. And that's already worked for me. 
all I'm doing is just trying to get those two uh, pins, the two click pins, to sit inside those ridges. And now I'm going to uh, screw it in and secure it. Line those up, find those holes. You can certainly put some grease on those holes as well. Uh, and I think I may as well go ahead and do that since we're here. Obviously, see I'm greasing the, the screws, not the holes. A uh, more effective way of greasing for blocking corrosion or things locking up inside would be to grease the threads on the screws versus the hole itself. But either one can work. Snug it down, you don't have to over tighten these things. And now for the top portion, this round one goes first, just drop it in. Either one of these washers, these metal washers will go in afterwards. Then you have this uh, star pattern or octagonal pattern going in last with the final metal washer. And we're gonna secure it by taking just this side right here, angle it down, find the ridge that it should be in, which is right about there. And then we're gonna squeeze everything together. push down and pop these things over into the groove that it should be in and it'll look like that always double check it to make sure now we can double check our spool to make sure the clicker is working stick that on there it doesn't need to go all the way down and we know it works now before we go too far we're gonna remove the handle that's just turning it backwards or counterclockwise to get off and we're going to work on the bail, I'm sorry, the rotor and the bail assembly next. So to remove the rotor, all we're going to do is pull this stack up. It's going to rock it. Be a little gentle or careful with this because there's a lot of seals and O-rings, gaskets, all those things, rubber stuff that you can damage potentially. Undo those three screws outside there. Pull that cap up which is sometimes you have to use a screwdriver to do it. On the day you'll find a washer or a gasket. Remove that before you remove that first. Just so you don't damage it. And now we can remove uh, this nut. And the nut is righty to loosen. You can see right there it tells you. Uh, before you do that, you want to take note that the way this will line up at the end is that the flat sides will be facing the screw holes, and that's how that will fit back on there. Now under there you have another, you have another O-ring or another seal. If it doesn't come up, uh, if it doesn't come out easily, I'm gonna leave it in there because uh, I don't think I have another one. I might have this seal actually. I think I do. That's what that looks like. All right, so let's rock and pull up to get it off, like so. Make sure that O-ring is under there. Notice that on the O-ring underneath there. All right, so two things on the bale or on, on this assembly here. We have a sluggish bale flip. We can see that. And then we also have a bad line roller. So we'll be replacing those, replacing the line roller bearing and seeing what we can do about this. All right, so we're gonna undo a few screws here. I loosen a few screws. This one, this one, this one. And to remove this cover here, there's a screw inside there. I may not open that up and also loosen this screw here and loosen the line roller screw if i didn't mention that already first item i'm going to start with uh, in terms of removing would be over here i think i see what the problem is already so i'll show you a little tip when we get back to the bail wire uh, under these screws there might be a washer 
there should be a washer but it doesn't mean it's always there and same should be the same for this side as well yeah it's there gently pull up careful not to release the load on that spring too quickly you can certainly pull this out right now oh, it comes like that Re remove these two screws to expose the trip arm and I think that's all that's under there yeah just the trip arm under there and that is it oh, I did forget to mention there's also a screw at the top here that secures this beauty plate that's uh, right there also if you notice there's a spring here it's a click spring and a click button those two things came from this side where the trip arm is in that hole right there all right let's open this up and show you what the stack looks like Ooh, I see some rust I never like to see rust all right so you have your screw your line rule screw the bail arm and this may or may not come off it did which is good that collar there aha uh -huh. we got trouble we got trouble okay uh, so a simple trick for these all right so a simple trick for these uh, these kind of line rollers is to put that screw back in we're not going to go all the way down but we're going to go down enough where it has some good support to it we'll take our we'll take our wrench here and now we're going to just squeeze so versus doing any other tricks you may you may use you can just gently squeeze this and it will free it up uh, it doesn't always work that easily but it does usually work and now all you have to do is undo this screw and pull everything off that there for a second and show you what the breakdown is okay so basically the setup is you have this line roller screw the bail arm this collar or line roller washer you have a bearing in here I'll, that I'll remove in a second on this side you have another collar with a thin line roller washer and the line roller in the middle that line roller the thicker end the wider end will be facing the bail arm so it'll be looking like this. And let's see if we can remove this bearing out of here so I can show you the, the bushing that's inside there. The bushing will still come out, but I want to get this out first and use that as support to pull the bearing out. There we go with that. And now we have the bushing that we can just push out gently like that. Notice that there's a little ridge or stop inside. If you look at it from one angle, that stop will be going in facing towards the bail wire. So it'll be looking kind of like that. I'll show you this part so you can see it. And you also see those ridges that are on there. There's a little thin drop off and a thicker drop off, that's how I'll be looking. Okay, so I'll get this cleaned up like I do for all the other stuff. Uh, same tools I'll be using. Uh, for this one, I may end up using more uh, a little bit of a wire brush to get the rust off of there. And we can also use uh, some rust remover. Uh, but for these, I probably will just brush it off. Uh, shouldn't be much harm to it. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. For these collars here that have a little bit of rust on the back, uh, what I'll use is a very fine, this is a 600 grit or 1200 grit, I believe, uh, sandpaper. Just a gently, 
take that rust off. That looks good. But notice there will also probably, there will likely be some rust inside the hole as well. So I'll use a rolled up piece of this and just stick it in. You can do it this way like this, or you can take it and just manually turn this collar as you pull it over this piece. And just double check it and make sure it got through and it looks good inside. Just clean that off and now you're good. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is oil this new bearing. And then let's work that in. Then we'll add some grease to it. The goal right here now would be to secure these pieces so they don't get frozen or locked up in there like we had earlier. And a good way of doing that is just to add grease kind of all around it. Not just on the line roller, of course, but on all these pieces. So I'll go inside here, the back side, definitely on this support arm. Uh, before I do that, actually, you'll notice that there's a, a shoulder on there. Hope you can still see that. That shoulder needs to fit in the squared off section right there. So when you stick that in, actually I'll show you when I when we stick it in. So when you stick that in, you'll need to press on this side and rotate this arm or sorry this uh, support side until you feel it drop into place. Just putting some residual on here. So you kind of you can just kind of follow along with the pieces that I'm greasing. You can also add a little bit of grease to the tip of that line roller screw, kind of like that. And let's put this bale assembly, or sorry, this line roller assembly back together first. First thing I will do is stick this in. And like I said, you want to feel it rotate until it drops in place. So I'll just put my hand on the back of it and rotate it until it drops in place, which is right there. You may have to do this a couple of times just uh, letting you know that. We'll take this, I'm gonna stick this in here first. Like that. Take our bushing, stick that through this side. Like so. And now I will take this and drop this over this, looking just like that. Not like that, but like that. And then sticking this on there. And next will be the bearing. Like so. Now all we have left is this collar here. Stick that in over it. It'll push that bearing down the way it's supposed to be. And now you'll have these two prongs on the end that you can see there. They'll be fitting inside that groove or that channel right there on the bail arm. So all I'm gonna do now is just take this in there, kind of rotate it until it locks in place, which is right there. Hold it like this and then screw this in. And I'm pretty much gonna snug it down the entire way.
Yep, that feels nice and locked. Now I haven't I haven't tightened it down into essentially, but I have snugged it down the entire way because that's that's the position it's going to be in. It's not going to be switching up much more than that. Okay, now I did want to show you the bail spring or the one that's in the reel right now versus a new one. And look at the difference in the size or the stack. That's a pretty huge difference. So what I was going to show you on here, uh, I will still show you, but I am going to replace the bail spring as well because we can see this one is clearly worn. So let's say for the bail spring, you didn't have a replacement on hand. Uh, one thing you could do is try to gently stretch that out. That doesn't always work, but it works sometimes. So you could try that. All right. So if you look at this, if you look at the bail, the bail wire over the rotor, you'll notice that there's a pretty wide gap here. Now there is supposed to be a little bit of a gap, but that's a little bit too much. So what we're going to do is gently bend this gently, gently bend it. And we're not trying to get it the entire way over or entirely over the post, but we are trying to get it closer. So there's less of resistance against this. So I'll keep working that until I get it to where I want it. And then I'll show you what it looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. That should be good. Okay, let's go ahead and do the, the rotor grease right along there. I will add some grease inside this hole where that click uh, spring will sit and the, and the pin. A little bit along there if you want, around that post, around this post. Some over the hole if you wanted to. This is uh, not metal, so it doesn't necessarily rust inside there. Uh, I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else. I'm not going to grease the spring. I'm just going to stick this in looking like that. Notice there's a thinner opening on one side versus the other. The thinner opening is where this is going through looking like that. Stick our trip arm in first. Pull that all the way to the top like so. Drop this in place just like that so it's under the trip arm and we'll cover this up the uh, smaller screw is the one that goes on the bottom Now we'll take this pin, I'm sorry, this the click spring, drop that in there so we don't forget it. Add a little bit of grease on top of it. And put the pin in, which is this little plastic piece. Just like that. Now I'm going to take this, rotate that where the prong is sitting up, add some grease to the top of it. You can put a little bit of grease inside there as well. Now we're looking for that hole right there. That hole is going to go over that pin or that prong. Sit like that and we're going to push down and kind of rotate as we do it. That's probably the easier way of getting it on there. Just down and a kind of a rotation, a very slight rotation. Now we can secure it. And I'll show you what it sounds like when we're, when this is in, back in place because we want to make sure that it's in properly. So for this side, we can take a little bit of grease inside there, down over it, and secure it with the screw. And now we can test it out to make sure it works. And it's a lot better. Now don't forget to tighten the line roller screw down. And also when you're putting the rotor back on, do not forget to put that O-ring that I showed you earlier on the bottom right there. Okay, so to open up the body of the reel, we're going to remove this cap, but first we're going to remove that rotor brake that's on there. Take a screwdriver, just kind of stick it in there, and then work it up. 
Now there's two fold doing this. You, you gotta ex expose some screws that are in there and you want to get that out of the way. You'll see the two screws right there. So now I'm going to take this top cover off and there's quite a few pieces under here that you have to pay attention to. Kind of pull it up gently. But there's certain places I don't really want to touch so I try to avoid it. There's this rotor ring in here I want to gently remove. Plus this gasket. Now we can pull this up, exposing an O-ring at the bottom here, and the inner race of that anti-reverse clutch. On top of here there might be a washer, there is. So we kind of set that up like that. All right, so for the rest of it, I'm going to leave that intact for now. I'm going to undo all these screws, but I'm going to lay them out so you can see them because they are a little bit different. Now we have to undo a screw in the bottom here on the rug guard to expose the other screws on the body. So you have three screws over here and those two screws on the top. Those two are the same size and look to be the same, same everything. Uh, these are going to be different. I know these are all the same size, but for the lower portion of it, so you have those two longer ones at the top and those three shorter ones on the bottom. Now while I'm here, I'm gonna remove this seal. And there's a reason why I do it uh, for when I'm reassembling the reel, because sometimes having this this uh, cap on will create more of a kind of a suction inside here when you put the reel back together. Now I just flip it over, kind of rock as I pull up, and it should come off. Awesome. Notice that seal came off with it. That's one of the things that normally happens. We'll have to stick it back inside that channel all around there. All right, so now we can pull this up, like so. Push this all the way to the bottom. Pull this out. And now we can angle it up and push it out. Pull your gear out and pull out your oscillation gear. You'll have a bushing underneath there. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'll take it off. On the bottom of this ring, there's a couple of little tabs that have to fit inside slots on the housing. And to get that bearing out and this one, we're gonna remove some screws. There's three screws around each one of these. This is the easier one to move to, to take out because it's um, it's not a metal body. Sometimes the hard one will be this one, which is a metal side. Notice under there you have a washer and then you also have an O-ring or a seal to help stop water from getting in there. Same thing for this one. Uh, to get this gasket off, what I would use is something like a knife, like a blade, and gently work under it to get it started, then the rest should be fairly straightforward. You just want to protect against ripping that or damaging it. Like so. Now it's laid out looking like that. I'm going to set it over here. For these screws, these are a more delicate head so I make sure I push down firmly to get those screws out. And definitely when I'm putting this back in, I'm gonna add some grease to those holes. All right, so I will get this cleaned up. I will leave this intact. The truth is I can't always remove the screw, even though I should be able to remove it. Uh, when you order this piece, uh, let me see if I remember correctly. Yeah, when you order this piece, you're ordering the entire thing. You're not ordering just either this bottom part or the shaft you're going to order the entire stack or the entire assembly. So it's best to just leave it the way it is. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. I lied to you. Before I go, the bearing on the top and on the bottom of the pinion stack just looks like that. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit after I clean this stuff up. All right, so first let me show you where this, these two little tabs 
logo. That's the tabs for the oscillation gear. You have two receiving holes, one right there and one on that side. A uh, good way of doing it is just simply sticking it on there and rotate as you push down until you feel it pop into the slots that it should be in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first would be add a little bit of grease just inside there where the bearing sits, some inside that hole, some around there. Go to the top, somewhere the bearing or the pinion bearing will go. Light coat on this side as well. And I say light, I mean pretty light. You know, you're not trying to over pack this and there's a reason why. Uh, but I'm definitely going to grease those holes. And even though this is not metal, I'm gonna do these as well. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna put in would be the bearing on this side. I'm gonna oil it. get that worked in so we have the seal that goes first that's the rubber seal make sure it's sitting flush drop this in I want to make sure it's flush I don't think it's flush yet you do want to make sure it's flush there's a little receiving hole inside there that you want it sitting inside that looks right. Drop it down and put the bearing in. Now we can secure the bearing with the three screws. Now I notice on this reel the, the screws are different for each side. Now I know that the, the grooving on the threads is different. I just can't remember if the uh, if they're always like that. I don't think they were, but I could be wrong. Snug them down and now we can stick on this part I'll add a little bit of grease around it stick it over it and rotate until it drops in place it has to drop in place there we go now we're going to put a light coat of grease on this. You kind of barely want to see the grease. Now grease the rest of it, just the entire surface area. And a decent amount over that post. pretty good. I'm going to drop that on there. Have that facing down looking in that direction somewhere. And now we may as well go ahead and put the bearing in on this side. Same process. You want to stick that rubber seal in but you want to make sure it fits in that channel that it should be in. There's a little opening or recess in there that you can see when you're looking at your reel. I think we're there. Oil the bearing. Then just drop it in and secure it with the screws. Okay, so before we get any, any farther, we're gonna go ahead and stick this rubber seal back on, uh, knowing full well that it may slip and move on us, but we wanna kinda of have as much room as possible to put this back on there. So I'm gonna add a light amount of grease just along the edge. And I'm gonna do the same thing when I put the seal in. Those are some tabs there's some tabs there. Those tabs are going to fit in some tabs that you see on the housing. I like to start with the top part. For me, that's kind of the most difficult part to do. So like that. And then I'm going to take my screwdriver and just kind of work that in while searching for those tabs 
put them in the right spot. All right, that wasn't too bad. And I'll brush a light amount of grease on top of the outside. All right, let's go ahead and do the, the block and that drive gear. Grease inside there. The entire surface area of it. I think on this reel, uh, the one thing that tends to go bad would be this. And that's just because somehow water got inside and it breaks this down. Leave it on a shaft, not a whole lot. You really don't need it. And the same kind of concept that we did for the cross line or for the oscillating gear, we're going to do for the main gear, just a light amount of grease. Now I will also stick some grease inside this hole where the handle will sit or ride. Alright, so the first thing we're going to put in will be the main gear. So we're just going to drop it in, just like that. Then we're going to take our stack here, slide that in under it, looking like that. Lift it up over that little post right there. Then kind of find that groove where it's supposed to be sitting in, which I can't find. Lift this up a little bit. There we go. And then drop that back in place. And now we can take this post right here, stick it through. I'm adding some residual grease off my fingers on it. Make sure it goes all the way up to where it comes through that little notch or you can see it in that opening right there. Stick our washers back onto the main gear or sorry, the drive gear so we don't forget them. And at this point we could cover it up. So I guess that's what we'll do. That sounds like a plan. Now I won't screw it in yet, just in case I need to open it back up, but that part is good. All right, some grease, I'm sorry, some oil to these bearings here. Light them onto the pinion. I let the grease all the way up here and the threads stick the bottom bearing on. That's the first one I'm going to put in. And I won't put the top one on yet because I want to use the leverage that I will have with this to kind of fit that in that in this um, let me put this up actually. I can't put this cover on yet because what I need to do is, is play with that, that drive gear when I'm putting this down inside there. So let's take this in, push down. We're going to get to the point that it's being blocked. I'm going to pull that up a little bit. Now I'm going to continue down to where it sits in place, drop it back over it, and now I can cover it up. Now we'll take the second gear, the top gear, drop that on, secure it like that. And now I'm going to put this o-ring on so I don't forget that part. But I can't put the rotor brake on yet. For this one you put this ring on, this o-ring back on, you want to make sure you're not rolling it, just more pushing it on there, because if you roll it, it'll come back up. All right, so now we'll go ahead and grease, I'm sorry, now we'll go ahead and add those two top screws. And the reason I said grease is because I want to grease them. The first one in. It goes in pretty far. I'm not snugging these down yet, but I am getting them to bottom out. All right, let's snug them down. I'm going to do a field test on this. I think it feels good. It's always hard to tell. When I put everything back together, obviously we'll tell, <laughs> we'll tell then. Uh, so now I'm going to cover this up. I'm going to put this on. Uh, on the bottom here, you'll, feel, you'll see a couple tabs. Let's clean this off. 
whenever you see too much of that grease or whatever or liquid around there there's a risk that it goes inside and inside these rollers you don't want too much in there if any at all so what I'll do is I'll take a q-tip just kind of work it around to clean out any excess uh, grease or oil that may be that may have transferred to there I'm not gonna touch the top part but you'll see two tabs on the bottom those two tabs are gonna fit inside this hole here and this hole here all we're doing is just trying to find that and then just seating it properly right around there that's it now we'll take the inner race which I've already cleaned off drop that over it turn the pinion as you push down on that and then it'll sit properly like that now remember I said there was a, a washer on top of it I'm gonna stick that back on there now before we put the cap on uh, let me show you something on there hopefully that stays in place these screws and we're gonna put the cap on first we're gonna put a, uh, a couple of the pieces on first I think uh, but these screws have some washers under there so if you have some washers that are laying around somewhere they may have come from there all right so now I'm going to take this rotor ring drop that on like that then take this gasket and just stick it over it so it's in place now we can take this and we're going to line up the three holes. Let's just take these screws out so you can see it better. We're going to line up those three holes with one there, one there, and one over there. I'm going to make sure this is down. I also want to make sure that's down because you don't want to compromise that. Okay, so the way it looks good to me is just like this. And I think that is right. We're gonna find it in a second. One went in, that one went in, and that one's in. And then just secure it. Don't go too tight on this, but you wanna somewhat snug it down still feels pretty good all right so now we take the rotor brake stick that back on there just kind of work that down like this get our other screws and we'll put those in Add some grease to them like I like to do on occasion. And then get them in there. Take one more feel at this. Still feels good. Now we can cover this up. Some people like to add grease inside there. I really don't. But I do like to grease these screws right here just in case water gets in and settles on top of them you can also grease right there where that screw is going to go for the boot stick it over and then just screw it in don't over tighten this one all right, so I'm gonna put the rotor on there without the seals, just to get a feel for how it feels. Yeah, that feels good. Okay, so I've greased and added the, the rubber O-ring to the bottom, greased and added the rubber O-ring to the top, and I'm just taking it back over The shaft like that or sorry the pinions gear like that and now I'm gonna stick this nut back on that little dip there will be facing down and remember it's ready to loosey so lefty to tighty and as we said earlier we want to line those flat sides up with the with 
with those uh, holes right there so that looks probably about right I won't even worry about it because I think it's probably right and one more test again just to make sure now we'll go ahead and take our this rubber grommet or gasket right there stick that in um, I like to add sometimes a little bit of grease around this and on those holes just want to add a little extra protection to it because they're openings so if you have a sealer here you might want to seal those things off also cover it up secure with the screw our screws and snug on these but not over tighten drop this washer on I didn't take that that seal off of it and then put these pieces on it <laughs> I like to put them all at once and now I'm going to put this cap back on All right, so the last thing left to do will be the handle. And what we'll do here is just kind of work that because I feel a little tight. Uh, I'm gonna open this up just to see how it looks inside. But if it's nothing crazy looking, I may end up not doing anything to it. And then I may, who knows, let's see. Take this cap off of there. Let's open the stack up and see how it looks. The bottom one is what worries me the most, always. So I guess we're just gonna take a, a full look at it. There's a washer there. This one has two. What I want to what I want to check is that bearing on the bottom. That's what I'm looking for. Keep that out of there. There's my other screw. Now I don't know if these are washers or I'm sorry bearings or, or bushings, but we're gonna find out. If they're bushings. That's awesome. It's a bushing. That's nice. That's nice. Is it a bushing on top too? Or nothing on top? It's got to be something there. There is. But it feels like a bushing. So we're going to leave that alone. That's really good stuff. Yeah, if there's something on top there, it's a bushing. We're gonna leave that alone. And I'm just gonna clean out inside here. Same thing up here. And we're gonna add some grease inside the bottom hole. Some along this shaft. Like so. Some on top of that hole where the screw is going to go. Stick our washers back on there. Take our bushing. Let's get that cleaned off a little bit. Stick it back up in there and drop this down over it. Oh, that feels nice. Uh, let me stick some oil inside here for that top bushing and then let's secure it. If you have trouble with the screw, you can take a 
dab of grease put on the tip this way it secures and doesn't really go anywhere brush this out stick the cap back on there and then the screw this back in For this part, we're going to brush it out. I'm going to blow that up with some air. Add a little bit of grease. I'm sorry, a little bit of oil first. Then some grease behind it. You can also grease the threads where it's going to go inside the drive gear. Now let's screw the handle in, put the spool on, do a quick test of this reel, make sure everything works, and then send you on your way. That feels good. I like to add a little bit of grease on the top here where the drag knob goes over it. Let's test the drags out. Okay, drags are great. Um, we saw the bail flip already, so that's good to go. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you found the video useful, please hit that thumbs up button. If you appreciate content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel and spreading the word about it as well. All right, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Everybody. This is going to be great. I think. Uh, No say. It does not rot it bomb I'm still talking. Holy moly, holy you moly, moly lolly lolly. Ting 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 ting